Hello and welcome to Knowing What's Normal. My name is Andrea Jones. I am a registered nurse with my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, Health, Life, and Hormone Coach. And I am the founder of the international company Abundant Wellness with Andrea. I have the privilege of working with women all over the world um, to balance their hormones, get rid of their terrible mood swings, ease them through menopause. Um, and it is just the biggest blessing of my life to get to do the work that I do. Um, I am very excited to share with you tonight, um, or today, if you're watching the replay, wherever you're watching from, a little bit of the basics. And this really is all about knowing what's normal. So one of the biggest reasons that I um, chose to leave my very cush nursing career um, in the hospital and teaching nursing students was because there was this huge gap in women's health care um, where um, symptoms are being ignored unintentionally. Um, people are not getting the help and the results that they need. And I decided to use my background in nursing to really do all the, the education, the um, all of the certifications, the research and development and put together um, something to help women go through that process with ease. And so one of the biggest things that I have seen that is missing is actually that because um, we have not gotten the help many of us have not gotten the help that we've needed from practitioners. So many women don't actually know what's normal, what's healthy, what's not healthy. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, as well as diving in a little bit to root causes um, and what you can do to start feeling better. Okay. So um, let's dive into what's normal and what is not normal. So um, very basic of basics, your brain, your ovaries, your adrenal glands all produce hormones that are essential um, for you having regular painless periods. Okay. So I know that that is probably maybe the first time that you've ever heard that you can have painless periods, but your periods should not be painful. Um, and we're going to talk about specifically how this re relates to um, more mature like health issues. So going into perimenopause and menopause, but I want to talk about this because really this, if we catch these symptoms now, um, or if we're having a lot of issues now, I should say with painful periods, irregular cycles, um, having a lot of mood swings, et cetera, that's a really good indicator of how you're going to move through perimenopause. So you should have regular, meaning anywhere between 27 to 35 day cycles that are painless. Um, ideally, they would not last more than five days of a cycle. Um, mood swings um, should not be happening. We should have a stable mood as we are going through our cycle, we should feel energized, um, which honestly, I didn't believe was even possible until I experienced it for myself. So if we are having symptoms of irritability, fatigue, mood swings, insomnia, bloating, um, constipation or diarrhea, all of those symptoms around our cycle, that lets us know that there's something going off with our hormones, um, sorry, something going on with our hormones that we really need to look at and adjust so that we can go through perimenopause and menopause with ease, okay? So what is normal as we begin to age is that our brain and our ovaries stop producing as much estrogen and progesterone. And what that looks like is that can look like all of a sudden our libido starts to lower, meaning we're not as interested in sex. Um, sex is uncomfortable because we're having vaginal dryness. Um, we might be having hot flashes or night sweats or mood swings um, where you just feel like your body, is, you're like a robot that's breaking down essentially is what a lot of women tell me it feels like. So it is normal to have those hormones lower, but what is not normal is that we're having all of these symptoms that are very uncomfortable and can last for years for some women. So when we actually support the body appropriately by number one, dealing with any root causes that may be presenting obstacles to our feeling our best, um, we remove those obstacles and then we re-nourish the body so that it can function optimally without having all of these issues standing in the way. So like I was sharing before, when we don't deal with 
these issues, these symptoms that we're having that we're kind of ignoring because we've been told they are normal, um, they will get worse over time. And they do uh, let us know that there is an increased risk for cardiovascular disease and reproductive cancers. So I'm going to dive into some of what those risks are and what the root causes are so that you have an understanding of that foundation that we build upon. So there, after all of the, you know, 10 years of research and development, we have kind of boiled this down to three main root causes. And obviously there are a lot of other micro root causes within those little ecosystems. Um, but the three main root causes are liver congestion, meaning that our liver is not detoxing appropriately. It's not breaking down our hormones. It's not breaking down toxins and getting them out of the body. Um, and that can cause significant issues uh, with women's hormones. But specifically what we see when we begin to support the liver pathways and the detox pathways is a complete elimination or significant reduction in those uncomfortable symptoms like night sweats and hot flashes. So the liver plays a huge role in our hormone health. That's root cause number one, if our liver's not doing so great, okay? Second root cause would be the gut-brain disconnection. So our gut and our brain were formed out of the same tissue in utero. The cells are very similar. They have very similar functions even within the body, even though they look completely different. Um, it's ab absolutely fascinating to me, all of the research that's coming out about the gut brain, um, the gut brain connection. So um, our gut, if it's not healthy for many reasons, which can be a standard American diet, chronic stress, um, even things like uh, posture issues or functional issues with our, um, our alignment can actually impact um, can actually impact the gut brain connection, antibiotic usage, chronic infection. So, um, things as simple as Epstein Barr or strep have been known to significantly impact the gut pregnancy, even though pregnancy is an amazing and beautiful thing has a tremendous impact on our digestion. So I, I work with a lot of women that have seen like significant issues with, um, their digestion happen after pregnancy. And that that's because of the hormone shifts that happen and just the physiologic stressors that occur during pregnancy. So that gut brain connection, um, those are some things that can disrupt it. Um, when we begin working on healing that gut brain connection through addressing our stressors, um, making sure that we're getting adequate sleep, like replenishing sleep, sleep where you wake up and you feel awake and not tired and fatigued for three hours. Okay. Um, when we begin to address those, um, issues and even issues of inflammation in the gut, then our gut can actually tell our brain to make those happy mood chemicals and to make the right hormones that we need like estrogen and progesterone. Because one of the biggest issues, like I said, is when we age, our brain actually stops producing, um, some of those essential hormones and stops telling other parts of the body to to begin produce or to keep producing those hormones. So if we can support that gut brain connection, we can uh, not only protect the brain so that it's able to make those hormones, but we can prevent a lot of un unfun issues and symptoms. Okay. Um, and then the third one, the third root cause would actually be um, an imbalance in our nutrients. So we're not getting adequate nutrient building blocks to support our hormones. And this is true for every single woman that I work with, even the ones that eat super clean. It's not enough to eat super clean. We have to be eating specific targeted foods that help to support our hormones. And I'll share some of what those are here in a little bit. When we address those root causes in a physiologic, a way that supports our body's physiologic way of working, meaning we're supporting the way it naturally detoxes and we're supporting that gut brain connection, the way that it should be functioning optimally. Um, then all of a sudden these, these symptoms start to just kind of disappear. So, um, it's amazing to watch and witness that. So 
when we enter menopause, I know a lot of women ask me this, like, well, isn't my estrogen supposed to lower? It is supposed to lower. That is a normal thing, but it is not normal to have all of these uncomfortable symptoms. So where we start to see problems, like I said, is if the detox pathways aren't working properly and that gut brain connection is not in a good place. Um, and this is why a lot of women might see some like mild improvement with hormone replacement therapy, but not like enough to actually feel good. Like they just, it's enough to not feel miserable, but it's not enough to not feel good, to feel good. So, um, so really replenishing those basic building blocks to support our hormones is essential. And when we do that, we can actually eliminate um, it actually, you know, brings up the estrogen just to where it should be so that you're not having those uncomfortable symptoms anymore. So I hope that this was beneficial to you. Um, one of the things I want to talk about before I go is actually some of the things that you can do to support your detox pathways and to um, make sure that your body is getting those nutrients to support your hormones um, so that you kind of know a little bit of what to focus on. So um, we focus a lot on targeted foods um, with the women that I work with, which is meaning we have women of all different diets that are eating all different things, which is what we should, we should have some variety on our diet. But one of the things that um, I encourage you to focus on is getting whole foods. Um, so foods that are like the least processed possible, closer to the ground, um, if possible, um, foods that are at a minimum non-GMO or organic if possible. If that's not possible, then do the dirty dozen or the, the clean 15. Those are great rules to live by if that's not within your budget or you don't have access to it. What that does is that significantly decreases the toxic burden in the body that can be manifesting as reproductive issues, okay? Um, getting whole foods, eating things that are full of fatty acids that our body needs. So like avocados, nuts, nut butters are amazing for getting those fatty acids in really good fish oil or getting really good quality fish. Those things um, can actually help to uh, balance out our, our omega fatty acids, which not only protect the brain, but protect, protect our cardiovascular health so that we are not having those negative reproductive issues um, or negative cardiovascular issues because of reproductive changes. Making sure that you're getting lots of fruits and vegetables. I know that these are like foundational things that we all know, but sometimes we forget. Um, getting lots of vegetables, they're full of antioxidants, but they're packed with nutrients that support your liver and your digestion. So, um, and then last but not least is making sure that you're managing your stress and getting good sleep. And one of the best ways to manage your stress is through moving the body. And so I love that um, Beth has put this together um, because it just ties in so beautifully with hormones. I love how, um, how mindful she is of the female reproductive system and how our bodies work and being mindful of our energy, um, all of those good things. So I hope that this was beneficial to you, um, that you got some good nuggets out of this to move forward. And of course, if you have any questions, questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks for watching.